You've probably heard of TDD and you probably want to go from beginner to pro and stand out, ace that interview, get the job. What if I told you there is a way? You need to write tests for your code. This might sound irrelevant or boring, but trust me, it is neither of those. It is important and super fun because you're still writing code. You will have lots of different perspective on your code. Test-driven development, aka TDD, can be done on the front end and on the back end. In whatever language you're using, let me give you a demo. Here we have a simple example of a cucumber test and it's written in plain English. So you'll see we've got a feature at the top. This is a feature we're trying to describe and here you can write any text and then we have the scenario. So we want to test the root endpoint on our MPI. And we're going to say given I make a get request to this URL, when I receive a response, so we can wait for that, then the response should have a status of 200 and the response should contain hello world exclamation mark. So let's run it and see. So we run npm test and we get an error. And if we look, it says the actual was hello world with no exclamation mark, but we actually expected an exclamation mark. So it shows us what the difference is. So we can fix this. Either we can say, actually, we didn't want the exclamation mark in the results, or we can fix the actual code and say we do want the exclamation mark. They don't match up. So in this case, let's just fix the test and say we have updated it, it is what we wanted. And so now, if I run it, it runs and it's happy, it's doing those checks. Yes, I'm checking for a string, and you're probably checking for JSON, but it's just as easy to check for JSON as well. The great thing about the Cucumber test is it's written in plain English. It's really easy for people to understand the feature you're trying to explain and describe. And the great thing is, when you have many endpoints, many different posts and gets and puts and patches, you can also run these tests, regression across the whole API and check that when you've changed something over here, it hasn't broken something over there. This is why most projects have automated testing. And this is why if you want to stand out as a developer, be taken seriously as a developer, you need to write automated testing for your code, for your side projects, for your interview tests. And it doesn't matter what tech stack you're using, they all have testing tools and follow the same principles. In this video, we're going to be using a testing framework called Panctum JS with Cucumber JS. Let me tell you a bit more about those. Panctum JS uh, can be used for API automated tests across all the levels in a test pyramid. It can also act as a standalone mock server to generate contracts for your contract testing. Cucumber defines the feature files with all your stakeholders using behavior driven development, BDD automatically creates documentation that's up-to-date and easily shareable. Cucumber gives us a layer of abstraction with the Gherkin syntax. This allows us to write test code once and have it reusable and repeatable within our tests. If we go back to our example, if we wanted a second test, we could duplicate this, and now we have a different scenario, and we could go to the same endpoint, we could change it from a get to a put to a post, we could attach a body to it, and then we could expect a different response as well. So we could actually do a get to an unknown URL, hit the keyboard, and then we would expect a 404 back and there wouldn't be any response in there. And you can see how we can make this reusable and also explain what our API or front end does. So in this tutorial, we're gonna build a simple API and we're gonna build the test for it. But actually, we're gonna do it the other way around. We're going to write the test first, TDD, Test Driven Development, and then write the API to make the test pass. Let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is create a project. So let's make a directory and we'll call it TDD API. We now navigate into our TDD API directory and you can see we have nothing in there. So, you know, we can open VS Code and have a look and you'll see there's absolutely nothing inside this project. So what we'll do, let's initiate an NPM directory. So we can do NPM in it and we'll say why to accept all the basic defaults. So now we have a uh, package JSON in there as well. Great. So what you'd probably normally do is go to Express and create the app. Let's go to the test documentation first and have a look. So let's say usage. So we'll go to the quick start to get started. So it says install Panctum. Okay, let's do that first. Install Panctum. Okay, great. And next you can choose to use Mocha or Cucumber. I like to use Cucumber, so let's install Cucumber. We will not install it globally, we'll install it locally within the project. 
So now we have Pangtum and Cucumber installed. But again, as you'll see, we have no project files, no source files, no test files. So we'll do that next. So the test files go into a feature directory. So let's create the folder features. And then you can call the file anything you like. It just must end in dot features. So for example, here we can say example dot features. And now we're here. Remember I mentioned the title. It's more of a feature description for us. So we can say feature simple example for YouTube. That should be feature singular, my mistake. Now you can see the syntax code highlighting. Simple example for YouTube. And then next is the actual scenario of the test. And this is where it starts getting more important. So scenario name, we'll say, we won't say testing because obviously it's a test, but we'll say, hello world on root, on the root of the project, okay. Then this is important and we can see Copilot is really helping us here. We use the given when then syntax. So it's given, you set up some preconditions. When something ha happens, like you click a button, if it's a UI or if it's an API, you make a request or you do something like that. And then then is what you're expecting in return. So given, I make a get request to, and we're putting quotes around this because this is what can change so we can reuse the test. HTTP localhost 3000 with no path at the end. Next, we need to do when I receive a response, then it's also completing it for us, I should see hello world. Okay, let's hit save. And behind these feature files is a step definition. So we are gonna write code to make this work. However, we only write that code once and it's reusable multiple times. So to do that, we need to have a support folder under features. And you can rename these folders and configure it. I'm taking the default vanilla for now to keep things simple. And underneath the support, we will have the steps.js file. You'll see even Pangtum gives some examples. So we'll need to import Pangtum and Cucumber. Then you have this before special function where we can run it before every test. So that can be if we want to reset a database or anything like that. And this is where we can do our given when thens to match up with this. So given I make a get request to, and then this is what changes within the actual quotes. You can also do things where you make other parts of the test also into variables as well, be it string, be it a number. And we'll be getting in the string, this will be a URL. Thank you, Copilot. And we want to do the when, because if we ran this now, we can add it to our package JSON. So in scripts and tests, by default, it has an echo no test specified. So we can run this. We can say cucumber hyphen JS. And now if we run the test, npm test, you can see it ran the first one and made a get request to localhost 3000. But then it says unimplemented step. So it doesn't know what to do with the when. So that's why we need to add that. So anything that doesn't match up, Cucumber will let you know. So let's go and make sure that matches up. So we have when I receive a response. When I receive a response. The function has no parameter because we haven't passed anything in in the actual feature file. We'll do an await and we will say spec toss. And what spec toss does is means it runs this test and returns a promise. So we could do a lot more checking here. We could check that also we get JSON back or a string back. We could do more checks, but for now we'll keep it really simple. And then what else did we have in our test? We also then had a then, I should see, and then we're gonna have a variable at the end. That should be then, I should see, and we'll say it's a string. And we are expecting, we can call it a match. You can call this variable anything you want and Copilot has completed it for us, but unfortunately that is wrong. We're gonna have spec response should have body match. Or we can change it to be body if that makes more sense. So now if we run this, again, we haven't updated our test and we could have duplicate tests if we needed to. Now, if we run this again, let's have a look. What are we expecting? I'm expecting a failing test because there is no API there yet. So let's run it and see. And it says, does the before, it does the given, when I receive the response, failure. There's nothing listening on localhost 3000. So now we can create the API to make this test path. This is test-driven development. So next, let's install Express. 
So if we head to the Express documentation, we do the getting started, installing. We've done the NPM in it already. So we want to do NPM install Express. Express is installed and let's go to their Hello World example. And we can take this whole code. I'm not going to go into details into Express. What we'll do is create a source folder. Then in source, we'll create a file called server.js. In here, I'm going to copy and paste the example that came from the Express documentation. But basically, we um, include Express, we create an app, and we set the port number. And then on the endpoint for a get, so not a post or a patch or a put, we're going to send back hello world. And then it's also going to, once it starts listening, it's going to put a console log out. So now if I run this, what are we expecting? It says hello world exclamation mark. So now we need to run the server and we can check because it's a get, we can check it in the browser. And then if it works, we can run the test. So let's have a look. So we will want to start. So we'll say start and we will want it to be node source server JS. And now we save the package JSON. We go to here, run npm start. So now it's running on localhost 3000. If we go to the browser and refresh it, it says hello world. So that's great. And that's what we had in our server with an exclamation mark. In our test, we have no exclamation mark. So let's run it and see. So now if we open a new tab and do npm test, it should fail, but with a different failure this time. Before it said it couldn't connect to localhost. Now it's saying actually it expected the plus, so hello world exclamation mark, but it got without an exclamation mark. So what we can do, we can add the exclamation mark to here, or we can remove it from the uh, API response. So let's clear that and run the test again. And now it's green. So now we know that our scenario of our test of making a GET request, receiving a response, and seeing that it says hello world works. And you may think, Eddie, I could just do that really quickly in the browser. But imagine you have 10 endpoints, 30 endpoints, and you have different conditions where you're sending different parameters. You're expecting maybe a username, an email address, but you want to check if you don't send those, do you get a 400 back? And then if you send one of them, does it come back with an error saying you're missing the email, it's a required field? And you'll have so many different conditions on a single endpoint. So imagine when you have 10 endpoints, 20 endpoints, and you've got gets, patch, post, put, and even in the post, you have, like I said, those different variables. You can't test that every time you make a change. Whereas if you've had automated testing, you could run these very, very quickly and easily. And they run so fast. So you could duplicate this. This could be for the, I don't know, members endpoint. Then you could have another one that says members endpoint. But instead of a get, it's a post. And then we could create another step definition that in the given you say and has data and you could specify the data that it has. And you can also do tables in this as well, which is really awesome. So you can do tabular data for your JSON. You can treat it as a string. It is really super flexible. If you found this video useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. While you're down there subscribing, giving us a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video. Do you test your code? And would you like me to dig deeper? I've actually written automated testing for my Battlesnake for a bit of fun, and I could go through that with you. Let me know what questions you have, and I want you to stand out and succeed in the tech community. I'll catch up with you in Discord between live streams and videos.